Good evening, and welcome to this special meeting. It was called on 24-hour notice. The special meeting is regarding board member relations and conduct and may include a possible executive session with legal counsel to discuss um, matters which may tend to prejudice the reputation and character of a person, provided that person may request a public discussion. As we come to order, we would like to acknowledge and that we respectfully acknowledge that we are residing on the traditional land of the Diné people. And our mission statement, our mission is to provide an excellent, equitable education in a safe, supportive environment so all students will succeed and contribute to a diverse and changing society. Would you please call the roll? Ms. Marathi? Mrs. Burnett? Here. Mr. Burgess? Here. Ms. Maple? Here. Mr. Dorn? Here. Mrs. Hardy and Mrs. Sanderson are excused. Okay. Thank you. Okay, as we go into this evening's meeting, I'd just like to take a moment to uh, review the board norms. These were affirmed by uh, over a number of years, uh, by each year by different board members, groupings, et cetera. But these norms are one, to assume positive intent of each board member and always use respectful language. To address concerns directly with each individual in private and outside the meeting. Avoid digital communication during the board meeting and broaden communication to the community from the board on the board's responsibilities, that is, be advocates for public education and the board's role. Next, we will have public comments. And I want to note that these are limited to items on the agenda only. Public testimony may be provided either in person or by Zoom. And once the agenda has been published, if you are interested in testifying, those who have signed up in advance with the board office will be called upon first. And if time remains, anyone else who is in person will be invited to testify until the one hour time limit has been reached. Testimony is limited to three minutes per person for a maximum of the one hour time limit. A person testifying shall state their full name, spelling their last name, and giving their city of residence for the record. What I'll do, because we do have a number of people who have signed up more than the one hour time limit anticipated, but so we can get to as many uh, people as possible. Um, I will call the one person up, tell the next person that you know, that you're next in line. And so if you want to move towards the front, again, as we move this along, we can make sure we hear from as many people as possible. Um, so uh, first is uh, Jamie Bodenstadt, and following um, her will be Lars Hansen. So is Jamie here? OK, come on up if you'd. Give us your full name, spell your last name, and give us a, your area of residence. Appreciate you being here. Um, my name is Jamie Bodenstadt. Uh, last name is B-O-D-E-N-S-T-A-D-T. And um, I was scheduled to be here tonight, months ago. Um, I'm actually on the, what are we on together? Uh, the parent, um, oh God, it was right there. Yeah, the parent engagement committee. Yeah, so I, I got to attend one meeting uh, last month. And, you know, one of, one of the questions that come up is, you know, why are some parents disenfranchised with the school district? And we, we want to get down to the bottom of it. Why aren't their kids coming to our school? And um, I think being here tonight shows why some of the parents are disenfranchised with you. Um, I think there's been some... Uh, people that don't know what they're doing at their job at that post. They don't know what kind of commitment has been made when they take that oath. And to be able to just, you know, let your mouth run wildly and say, you know, 
um, it was you know, misspoke. And I, I read uh, Brandy's apology. I don't know who Brandy is. I, I, I really, you know, I'm just kind of disenfranchised that I scheduled time to be here tonight and I might as well use it. Um, so with her comments, um, I really think I, I read her uh, apology and I would say the apology went more along the lines of she didn't really apologize for what she said, but more along the lines of where she said it. And I think someone in her position should know what that podium presents and how to conduct themselves. And really, if they didn't bring that knowledge into the job, they shouldn't be doing that job. Have a good evening. Thank you. Uh, Lars Hansen, and we'll be followed by Sharon Hansen. Hello, school board. My name is Lars Hansen, L-A-R-S-H-A-N-S-E-N, -S -S -E resident of Fairbanks. I have made many mistakes in my life. While I won't go into details, I will say that I can easily relate to the recent public blunder that Brandy Hardy made in session and can empathize with what she must be going through right now. While her error in judgment will undoubtedly lead to repercussions that carry on into her time in the school board, but hopefully not end it, I believe that she has always acted in the best interest of the students, educators, administrators, and extended community of the Fairbanks North Star Borough School District. As a parent of two elementary school children, and also as a teacher at Hutchison High School, for years I have experienced how insufficient funding of the school district causes tremendous stress throughout all levels of the educational system, losing teaching positions, thereby increasing the pupil-to-teacher ratio, school closures, reduced bus availability, and the whole laundry list of other negative impacts erodes the educational system. During her time thus far on the school board, Ms. Hardy has been a stalwart champion of increasing funding for education, and that is what matters in the long run. Yes, Ms. Hardy made a big, big public mistake. There's no denying it. That said, I believe it is more important to look that she took ownership to her error via her apology letter. My fear is that the response to her mistake will result in a throwing the baby out with a bath water situation wherein all the uproar over her misstep will lead to her leaving the school board by whatever means, despite her great value to it, thus achieving a major loss for the Fairbanks North Star Borough School District. An important question should be asked here. What were legislators thinking when they changed their votes? Regardless of bribery allegations, it is abundantly clear that these legislators did not support education when they failed to override the governor's veto on SB 140. It appears that they are using Ms. Hardy's misstep to try and remove someone who really does care about the education of our children and funding for our schools and who is willing to put her neck out on the line to achieve that funding. I humbly ask that Ms. Hardy continue to serve on the school board. Her past record in support of education is outstanding. And doubtlessly, she has learned a valuable lesson in decorum, which will strengthen her as she moves forward serving our community. Thanks. Does the board have any questions of me at this time? Seeing none, thank you very much. Sharon Hansen, and then followed by, I'm going to ask, please, if, we, if you want to silently respond, but we want to keep things moving. Uh, so following Sharon Hansen will be Kristen Papp. Okay. Ms. Hansen, go ahead. My name is Sharon Hansen, H-A-N-S-E-N. -E I live in Fairbanks. Um, at the beginning of this month, I had the opportunity through Great Alaska Schools uh, to travel to Juneau to advocate for educational funding. Uh, they had received a grant, and they were looking for a parent of uh, students that attended charter schools. I was um, pretty nervous to go down there. I don't have any background in politics. It was a completely new experience for me. Um, over the three days that I was there, I met with several representatives and a few senators, a couple of which are in the room. Uh, overall, everyone agreed that more needed to be done to fund education. It's a crisis. 
uh, I learned in my three, three days there that it is quite complicated on how we actually do get this funding. I was even told at one of these meetings that uh, this one representative would not be overriding a veto because his bill hadn't gone onto the floor yet and he didn't want to shoot himself in his own foot. I can empathize when seeing Ms. Hardy's frustration on the night of March 19th. The children in our state are political pawns. I can see how it would happen that she misspoke. She has apologized for it. Since she is an educator, she will presumably learn and grow from this experience. I appreciate all the work that she and the rest of the school board have put forth to establish a budget, a budget made under extreme circumstances, all while having to guess the amount of revenue. Will there be revenue from the state? Will there be revenue from the borough? I support Brandy Hardy as school board president. She has shown exemplary leadership on the board. I am disappointed when I see the eagerness put forth by a select few to remove someone who has unwaveringly fought for public education in Fairbanks and by extension in Alaska. I attended the community forums. I thought those were a really great experience. That was the first time I felt like instead of me versus you, it became we. And I wanna see more of the we because there's a lot of work that needs to be done. After that budget was passed, you spoke about getting back to making this fiscal plan. Can we please come back to we, come back together? We need this fiscal plan. Our parents said they needed more time to come up with a plan for school closures for next year. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next we have Kristen Papp and then followed by Kristen Shoup. Uh, Kristen Papp, P-A-P-P, uh, -P -P, and I reside in Fairbanks. Um, over the past month, uh, I have felt shocked, angry, sad, extremely frustrated at our state for not fully supporting public education. Um, but watching our community come together, along with other districts across the state, to convince our legislators to pass that SB 140 just it was amazing. It overjoyed me. The governor's veto and the legislators flipping on their support of this bill, and it didn't pass by one vote. Again, I was just shocked and frustrated and angry again. And I, I understand where Miss Hardy is coming from. Um, she mistakenly misspoke. We all do that. Um, but she has owned it. That for me, that is huge. Um, as my son learned at school this year, she was in a growth mindset, not a fixed mindset. She owned up to that. And I appreciate that and fully respect for her. I have been on a number of boards myself. It is really hard when your kids are at the heart of something. I've been on one sports uh, club board and this was before I even had kids. Um, and it's, when it comes to your kids, it, it can be really difficult. And when they will be negatively impacted, that's, it's so hard. And in this case, it's not, it's not any one person's kid. It's all children in Alaska. It's all of us. It's our neighbors, it's our friends, it's our family here. It's all of us. They are all being negatively impacted by this. I've listened to public testimony, watched some of the discussions at the work sessions, and attended public th the public roundtable, and Miss Hardy is all in. She feels every decision, she bears every consequence, and you see it when she speaks. She cares so much about education. I, I'm feeling the same way, and that is what I want from anyone on a school board or any position that is from people making decisions for our community, for our schools, for our kids. 
someone who deeply cares as much of my, as my child, excuse me, <laughs> someone who cares so deeply as if my child was their own. I, she, she feels this way about every child. She's an educator and she will keep on educating. It is clear she represents everyone when she's making her decisions. I'm here this evening to voice my full support for Ms. Hardy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have Kristen Shoup in person and then April Smith will be after that on Zoom. Kristen Shoup, S-C-H-U-P-P, -P, Fairbanks. I am representing only myself. I would like to thank the board for holding this special meeting to address decorum. When Ms. Hardy took the position of president, she asked that her fellow board members hold her accountable. I think that that is a good sign of a leader to ask for accountability. So I imagine that she appreciates that you are doing that by holding this meeting. Last week, President Hardy made the mistake of sharing information in her president's report that was unconfirmed and that she qualified as a rumor. This was unprofessional and inappropriate for a board member. President Hardy has since apologized to those named in her statement. Ms. Hardy was also behaving unprofessionally towards her fellow board members on Wednesday evening. In particular, she was quite rude to Mr. Doran, but she did apologize to him at the end of the evening. And I find that to be another valuable leadership quality to recognize when you've done wrong and apologize for it. I would much rather have a leader that makes mistakes and recognize them, re recognizes them and apologizes than one who does not. All that being said, I do not feel that last week's lapse in decorum by Ms. Hardy, especially given the context and circumstances under which they occurred, warrants her removal from her position as president at this time or removal from the board. Up until last week, which I'll call Hell Week, where the board and staff spent over six hours each evening for three evenings in a row after folks already have day jobs and families to attend and had to make excruciating cuts to the budget, including closing a school and raising PTR, Ms. Hardy has been a strong and professional in her position as president and a very valuable asset to the board for her entire term so far. Ms. Hardy is an incredibly passionate advocate for public education with a great breadth of knowledge about the entirety of the school district, policies, the budget, including the nuances of funding from local and state contributions, and much, much more. She is kind-hearted and compassionate and genuinely cares about the community and its schools and is willing to fight for it. It would be a tragic loss to the community if she was removed from the board. I really hope that everyone in this room and everyone who has sent in emails and all of our elected leaders take a lesson from President Hardy and will engage just as passionately with their communities and advocate for not just adequate education funding, but for funding that will give opportunities for a stellar education to all students. A vibrant and thriving education is a critical foundation for healthy, sustainable communities and economies. Ms. Hardy made some mistakes last week. But if Jesus Christ the Lord can forgive tax frauds and cheats, rapists and murderers and insurrectionists, well, I do believe that this community can forgive Ms. Brandy Hardy for misspeaking under the stress of the loss of our community that has, was the direct result of actions taken by our governor and some of our irresponsible legislators who refused to override the veto. We can move on from this and give President Hardy another chance. Let's keep our priorities straight and focus the attention where it belongs on the politicians failing our students, our communities, and our future by not supporting education. Happy Easter to all who celebrate. Thank you. Okay. So next we have April Smith uh, via Zoom, followed by Tammy Wilson in person. Thank you. My name is April Smith, S-M-I-T-H, and I reside in North Pole. I'm here to ask you one simple question. If I had sat here in this room as a member of the board and accused Ashley Carrick, Maxine Dybert, and Scott Kawasaki of taking a $70,000 campaign donation in exchange for their vote and said to them from my official position speaking for you, the school board, as your elected president, that I hoped it was worth it, what would you do? What would you do if you also knew I was planning to run against one of those people I accused as Mrs. Hardy was planning to run against Representative Tomaszewski? If you would not treat me the same way you're coddling and protecting Brandy Hardy, then you yourself should step down from your position. 
if you're unable to put personal relationships aside and make objective, informed, and responsible decisions, then you do not deserve the public trust that has been given to you. The board should resolve to convene a special meeting to reorganize, and then you can all vote on the record whether you feel that Brandy Hardy deserves the trust you put in her five months ago. Personally, I encourage her to resign the position so that you're able to reorganize and move forward without the shadow of her drama hanging in the air. It disappoints me to have to ask this because I know that Mrs. Hardy has been running the meetings very efficiently and effectively. She just cannot be trusted at this point. And that brings me to her pathetic so-called apology. Saying that you misspoke is for when you say five instead of seven. It's not for when you gave a minutes long rant and then ended that rant with, I hope it was worth it. That was a deliberate statement. It wasn't misspeaking. It was saying something out loud and regretting it. Having an apology where you basically said you didn't even do the thing that you're apologizing for is disgusting, disappointing, and immature. It's just another reason the board should not trust Ms. Hardy to be in leadership. Do the right thing reorganize, elect someone you can trust to control the meetings and their emotions, and make this board respectable again. She didn't own it. She doesn't represent me or my kids. And just because your campaigning squad comes and says it over and over doesn't make it true. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to ask, please. Next, we have Tammy Wilson in person, followed by uh, Burke Freeberg. Ms. Wilson. Thank you, Vice President Doran. My name is Tammy Wilson, W-I-L-S-O-N. I live in the North Pole area. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you for having this meeting. I know it could not be an easy decision by any one of you, um, and I wouldn't want to be in your position either. But this this is a serious, this is more than a mistake. First of all, you know, uh, President Hardy stated it was a rumor. So therefore, she knew at that point that there was not necessarily any truth behind it. But yet she said it anyway. And that can't be taken back. The next thing that happened was when you make a mistake, and we all have, right? We've all said things that we wish we could take back. But when do we take those things back? Not days and days, not after letters have come, not after, you know, a whole bunch of emails I'm sure you've all received, you know, and all the social media that comes. You do it the next day. You say, you know, I got caught up in the, mo in the moment. And I wish I hadn't said that, apologize before any letter had to be written asking for that to happen. But none of that happened. And the public still hasn't been apologized to. They were the first ones that were appalled. Senator Meyer is my senator. I know good and well, I mean, I wasn't hurt by it because I know that it wasn't a true statement. But to say that here in public and not take ownership immediately to me is where the flaw was. So the least thing I believe that you can do is to remove her as president because she's already taken that position and not used it correctly. And I'll guarantee you, if any one of you had said it, most likely the same thing would be taking place tonight. So I just want to make sure you know that I don't think any of you are taking this lightly or you're going to be using this for some kind of a tool. But when you swear to uphold the laws that there are and to represent the public you are at a higher level of expectation than the average person is. Again, if she had gone the next day and come out and said, I'm really sorry for what I said, you know, and, and even stepped down at that point, stayed on the board perhaps if that's what she wanted to do. But that's not what happened. And then the apology, it just reminds me of like when your mom makes you sit around and said, who did it? Remember that as a kid? And finally you confess but you're only confessing because you've been caught into, in a trap versus that you're really, truly sorry. And so at this point, that, that's what bothers me more than anything else. First, she's not here tonight, and I can understand that she might not want to be, but that's all part of the consequences that come along with it when you do something wrong. So I hope, you know, this is more than a lesson. This is saying that you are a school board and you have to uphold the public and what we think to a different level than a regular citizen. And so I really encourage you to do what I think all of you know that needs to be done. And she needs to be removed as president. You need to do all the other and, and move on and get to your business because I know you have a lot of work to do. Again, thank you for being here tonight. And I'm really sorry it has come to this. Okay. 
Thank you for your testimony. Next is Brooke Freeberg, followed by Nikki uh, Eisman. Okay, if you'd give your full name, spell your last name, and area of residence. Can you hear me now? Okay, so Brooke Freeberg, I'm the mother of three boys who attend Pearl Creek Elementary, and I um, wrote this initially to you with an email, but then decided to sign up and testify. So dear school board, I am sorry that you've been given the real teacher experience. Like teachers, you signed up for this job because you want to help our children, our teachers, and our community. You work for pennies on our behalf, and like teachers, you have been working day and night with little acknowledgement of that hard work, only criticism. I am sorry that our legislators would take time to pen a public letter regarding Brandy Hardy's president comments that she made on the evening of March 19th, but they have not taken the time to acknowledge that there is still not proper education funding or what their plan is to remedy that. Therefore, making your job and teachers in Fairbanks jobs harder. I will make a point here that her closing comments were not comments she made up, but they are based on the newsletter that anyone who follows Representative Fields received in an email that same date. I have known Brandy that since she, um, I have known Brandy since she was a special education teacher in the Fairbanks School District. Her dedication to her students um, and the support she provided for them allowed for them to shine. She taught special education, what's called an IR classroom if you're not familiar, and she created an inclusive environment, allowing those students the same opportunity for the rest of the school. And much like she fought for her students then and their right to be included, she fights for all students. Um, I voted for Brandy then, and I would vote for Brandy again because of her dedication to all students and all community members. Regardless of whether their opinion was different or not, April Smith mentioned in her testimony that Brandy Hardy does not represent her. I think that's where we differ. April Smith did not represent me. Brandy Hardy represents all people. If she does not believe in your view, she will listen to you and acknowledge you and treat you respectfully, which was not the case with prior school board. Um, she is serving as president for the first time and she made a mistake, which she apologized for. Anyone who has been in public um, office knows that you just can't turn around and submit a apology. It, has, it has to go through proper channels. I wish the energy going into the public attacks on her, both on social media and in front of her young children, could be harnessed and directed at our legislators to demand proper funding for education. I'm sorry to the school board that instead of an outpouring of support and understanding, people came here tonight spending their energy complaining. The people's, when I look around this room, are faces I have not seen at prior meetings to testify and advocate for education funding. I spent hours on this House Senate meetings, House Finance meetings, and their names did not come up. This is a teacher experience. People have no understanding of education. That's right, I'm sorry, that's time. Oh, okay. Okay, thank Sorry, you. Thank you. Oh, okay. oh one yes. second. A question, Ms. Marty? More for you. She had 13 seconds um, on the clock because her technology wasn't working. I'd like to give her the 10 seconds back to fit wrap up her sentence. It was not her fault. That's I started it at um, 250 or two, yeah, 250, okay, we'll I say. I will put 10 seconds. Thank you. And I'm sorry to be strict with it, but no, no, I understand. No, I understand. So, um, hold on, this hold on one oh. second. <laughs> sorry, I just need to get it there. And I'm rather err on being careful with everybody. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Ms. Doran. Uh, this is the teacher experience. People have no understanding of education using their negative energy to bring you down. I support Brendy. I support you as a school board. And I recognize Thank the you. hours you've put in. Thank you. That's Thank fine. you. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so next we have uh, Nikki Eisman, and she will be uh, on Nikki Eisman. It will be on Zoom. And then she will be followed in person by Tamara Cruz Rosilius. And I just want to remind everyone, please, when you do testify, uh, give you full name, spell your last name, give area of residence. Um, comments are limited to the agenda itself. 
And I would ask that you address your comments to the board, not to other testifiers or others in the room, just so we can keep everything moving. All right, so um, do we have Nikki Eisman online? Okay. Um, I'm here, can you hear me? Yes, we can. If you'd give your uh, full name, spell yes. your last name, okay. area of residence, and you have three minutes. Nikki Eisman, E-I-S-E-M-A-N. Uh, I live on the Old Nanana Highway. Ah, school board members, I wish I could be there in person tonight. I can't thank all of you enough for your work on behalf of our communities past few months. You've been faced with the impossible task of, of developing a budget based on a series of financial unknowns. You've been asked to carry the burden of years of underfunding from both the borough and the state legislature. You've had the heartbreaking task of reading and responding to hundreds of emails from parents speaking against an increase in class size and also deeply concerned that their beloved neighborhood schools would be shuttered. You've heard from district employees and their concerns about being able to support their families if their jobs were taken. Together, we all rode the emotional roller coaster of SB 140, delighted that it passed with an unprecedented bipartisan majority, then hopes dashed with the governor's veto and further dashed with a failure to override. Throughout it all, you demonstrated leadership and made tough choices in this impossible situation. You did the best you could do with the pennies you were given. Let's turn back to the crux of this problem, Juno where the governor and the legislature have all been consistently underfunding our schools in defiance of their constitutional mandate. This is the moment where all of the interior legislators should be joining you, the school board members, in your efforts to fund education. Yet somehow, they are not. Public record shows that Representatives Kronk, Tomaszewski, Myers, and Prox all received emails and calls demonstrating overwhelming support for SB 140 yet they all voted no. So if not SB 140, then what? These four all claim to support public education, but I have yet to see any substantive communication to the Fairbanks community telling us their path forward. Where are the letters to the editor, the community perspectives? Again, if not SB 140, then what? You all recently received a letter from five members of our interior delegation. It began, Election funding has been a sensitive issue within the Fairbanks North Star Borough School District. We understand that potential school closures within the community have brought emotions to a boil. And I think that's where the letter should have stopped, right there. Emotions are high, and for good reason. This is not a moment for us to pick at each other. It's a moment for us to work together to figure out how to provide sustainable, adequate funding for our public schools, the bedrock of our community, and our society. Let's grant each other grace and move forward. I continue to appreciate you and give my full support to all members of this body. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony, uh, Ms. Resilius, and we'll be followed by Jen Gunderson. Tamara Cruz Rosellas, K R U S C R O S E L I U S, Fairbanks. First, I want to thank every person I'm speaking to, including Brandy Hardy, for their service to this community. To be asked to craft a budget without knowing revenue, that is a hard job. But that is the task legislators gave to this board, to craft a budget that has torn up this community with the knowledge that schools will be closed, to have to stand up here or sit there and do that in the face of this community's pain. I thank you all. We see you. Every person on this board was obviously broken at what they had to do last week and still might have to do more of. Context matters. But you stuck to your word and you did what you needed to do. Your official acts speak for themselves and they are commendable. But in this school's crisis, because it is a crisis, Ms. Hardy misspoke and apologized. And isn't that what we teach our students to do? Stand up for what you believe in, apologize if you get it wrong, be accountable. That said, we need to put the focus of this community back where it's needed, on legislators that should have had our backs, the legislators that are the conduit through which the board's funding comes. They left this board hanging, and this outcry should be for them to correct that. Because they didn't leave you all hanging out on a limb with no ladder, they gave you a ladder and then pulled it away last week. 
by not overriding the governor's veto of their original votes for necessary funding. Their original votes that show that they know it's necessary funding. The worst offenders were Representatives Tomaszewski, Kronk, and Senator Myers, whose own legislative office said his constituents were me messaging 95% in favor of education funding. They initially gave their support to this board, but then when it was time for this board to plan a budget, they reneged. They could have banded together to override the governor and save education funding. Just one more vote would have done that, but they didn't. That's what you were faced with. They pulled the ladder out from under you. Let's not fall for this misdirection, especially in Tom, Representative Tomaszewski, Kronk, Prax, and Senator Meyer's letter. They are focusing on the misspoken and not appropriately credited words of President Hardy instead of the job we have asked them to do to fund our district. The legislators, through their official actions, are the ones that have let down the community especially the military families at Ielson, by not having the guts to stand up for their own votes to fund education, but only offer excuses. Please accept President Hardy's apology and move on. There is so much work ahead, and I thank you all for your work. Thank you. Uh, next is Jen Gunderson, followed by Aaron Genazzo. Hello, my name is Jen Gunderson, G-U-N-D-E-R-S-O-N. -E I'm here tonight to support my friend, Brandi Hardy. In a newsletter published on Tuesday, March 19th, Representative Zach Fields from Anchorage wrote, quote, in pressuring Republicans to flip-flop and oppose a bill they previously supported, Dunleavy threatened a campaign and spent $70,000 per race against any Republicans who voted to override the veto, unquote. This is the issue that all of these people are so angry about. If they actually cared, they would be protesting to Representative Zach Fields, but instead they are here. I acknowledge that Brandy should not have, number one, assumed the email newsletter from Representative Zach Fields was accurate, and two, repeated the content of that newsletter from the dais to the school board, as school board president. As many of us know, Brandy has issued an apology and she acknowledges her mistake. Brandy has proven to be an incredible asset to our district as a parent, an educator, as a school board member, and now as school board president. Brandy understands the value of public education and passionately advocates for all children. I appreciate all the board members who have been crafting a budget while our legislators fail to adequately fund public education in Alaska. Do not let this group of people tell you who Brandy is or what to do. They have nothing productive to offer this community and exist solely to complain about those of us who work hard to help others. Thank you. Okay, next is Erin Genoso and followed by Allison Mogensen. Hello, uh, my name is Erin Genoso. Uh, my last name is spelled J-A-N-O-S-O. -O. Um, I live in Fairbanks. And I just want to start by saying thank you to each one of you for being willing to serve on this board, for showing up and doing your very best to salvage as much as you can for our kids from the terrible mess that's been handed to them by their governor, state legislators, and past borough assemblies. I know it's an absolutely thankless position uh, that you find yourselves in right now, and yet you've committed to doing that hard work and finding a way forward. So thank you. Um, but with that said, I'm here today to say that I am in fully in support of Brandy Hardy remaining in her roles as president and member of the school board. Uh, making a mistake with words does not preclude someone from a leadership position, because if it did, not one single one of us in this room or listening would be able to hold any position of leadership ever, because we all make mistakes. I know that I do. It's a part, unfortunately, of being human. I wish it wasn't, but the best that we can offer of ourselves is when we make those mistakes, that we own them, 
that we apologize, we learn from them, and go forward as better leaders because of that learning that happens. Ms. Hardy has the capacity to do each of these things as many times before, and she has already owned her wording mistake and apologized for it. There's no doubt in my mind that she has learned and will continue learning from this painful experience, and she will be an even better leader because of it. I would also like to say that it's painfully obvious that this huge hullabaloo is being made over an off-the-cuff wording error because our legislators would way rather bloviate about that than the real issue at hand, which is that our state constitution mandates that they maintain a system of public schools open to all children of the state. This means that they must provide adequate funding to educate Alaska's children, even if the governor does not want them to, but they're not doing it. Instead, they're saying yes about education one day by voting for SB 140 and then flip-flopping by voting against it shortly thereafter. When they and that's what they did when they failed to override the governor's veto. So let's shift this conversation back to where it belongs and demand that our state legislators do their jobs. Stop messing about with distractions and fund our schools already. Pass an adequate and inflation-proof increase to the BSA. That's the hullabaloo that should be happening right now. And let's all go to the polls also for the borough's special election on May 7th and vote yes for Prop A. Together, we can get this stuff done. So let's do it. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. I want to say thank you to everybody for listening politely as we keep moving. Uh, yeah. So next we have Allison Mogensen and we'll be followed by uh, Kanisha Rutkowski. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, we can. If you'd give your full name, spell your okay. last name and area of residence, you have three minutes. My name is Allison Moenson, M-O-G-E-N-S-E-N, -E um, and I live off of, um, I'm in the Pearl Creek area. Um, I'd like to first thank the school board for all of their hard work um, with this recent budget. Um, and I, I'll just keep it simple. I support Brandy Hardy, um, in staying in the president's position and I'll hand it off to the next person. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for your testimony. So we have Kanisha Rudgowski and followed by Patricia Gormley, um, who will be on zoom. All right. Um, Kanisha Rudowski, R-A-D-G-O-S-K-Y, uh, Fairbanks, Alaska. I'm gonna keep this sh really short and sweet. I appreciate every last one of you on here. I really do. And I'm keeping this here. This is my baby. Okay. And I'm a, he's keeping me if I'm not, he's keeping me, if I'm gonna have some decor. Basically, short and sweet, Brandy Hardy was my baby sped teacher at five. She's been in his IEP meetings. She's the reason why he is thriving. So guess what? You support my baby. I will support you. And that goes for anybody in this room. You support my child, I will support you. Brandy's a good person. She's good. She cares. And thank you to all of you, okay? Thank you for your testimony. So next we have Patricia Gormley on Zoom, followed by Carolyn Brown in person. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Patricia Gormley. That's G-O-R-M-L-E-Y. I live in the Pearl Creek District. First off, I want to say thank you to listening to so many hours of testimony and reading hundreds of messages. Your decisions made during these three long days of budget work reflect the commitment you made to our Fairbanks families. This year, the budget situation is a scary mess, and by postponing closing more schools, it puts us in an unsure situation financially but it was clear from the public we wanted time and a thoughtful process going forward. I appreciate that the board and the borough assembly are making effort to listen and give us a chance at properly funding the education of our children. First off, I, I've heard lots of testimonies that echo what I've said, but I also want to say, Brandy, it's okay to make mistakes. It is reflecting on those missteps and admitting to them that makes you a great leader and you should remain in your position. I know you're on tonight and I hope you hear this. We need more people like you in our government. I understand why you made this mistake. It's not like we have a governor that instills trust. Governor Dunleavy continues to do the opposite. When he came into office, he let go of over 800 state employees and requested a loyalty pledge of those who would he not let remain. He fired an Alaska Department of Law attorney, Libby 
Bekelar, as well as doctors at the Alaska Psychiatric Institute for not falling in line and signing his pledge. In 2019, he line item vetoed $334,000 in retaliation against the Alaska Supreme Court for not supporting his views on abortion. In 2021, he tried to circumvent the legislators in the confirmation process to put his appointees in positions that they were not confirmed for. This was all unconstitutional. It does not seem unplausible that he spoke to Republicans to force them to fall into line behind him and his bullying ways. In fact, on his monthly calendar for February, he's had 40 meetings with legislators. Of all three who were all with Democratic, Senator Wilichowski, were all with Republicans. On the 13th, he had 13 meetings with all Republican legislators. So to think that something shady went down in Juneau and possibly borderline unconstitutional or illegal is not a big stretch of the imagination. So I can understand why it was easy for President Brandy to make that mistake. Dunleavy's actions have spoken for themselves over and over again. So President Hardy, I don't think it's unrealistic for you to speak with strong criticism of our legislators or believe stories of bullying ever were occurring. I hope you will remain in your position as board president and continue to be a strong supporter of our children's future. Thank you. Thank you. So next we have Carolyn Brown in person, to be followed by Tiffany uh, Pizer uh, on Zoom. Can you Go hear ahead. me? Yes. My name is Caroline Brown, B-R-O-W-N. I live in Fairbanks. First, I want to thank all of you for being here tonight and for doing what you do. You guys have had some really long and really hard meetings. You've had to make some really hard decisions, and you're not likely done. Please know that I value the contributions that each one of you have made. I value your ideas, even when I don't agree with them, because I know that you made them in good faith, trying to find a way through this impossible mess. I also value Brandy Hardy for her role on the school board. She has proven to be tenacious, smart, and totally dedicated to all of the kids and families of this district. She has championed our teachers and our staff. She has spent hours upon hours listening to everyone's concerns about closing schools, increased PTRs, contracting out custodial staff, eliminating teachers at Hutch and Barnett, decreased funds for curriculum. It goes on and on and on. Along with all of you, she lobbied tirelessly to increase the BSA so that kids in our community had the support they needed. She worked to educate decision makers from her very real experiences as a parent and as a teacher herself. She also made a mistake and she apologized for it and I imagine she's learned quite a bit. But I can't ignore all of her hard work and all of the time that she's selflessly given and her dedication because of that misstep. I am not perfect and neither is anybody here. One thing I have learned is that there are few others as ded dedicated to education as Brandy in this room, especially. Many of y'all are up on the dais. You've all been fighting for education alongside her, but here's what makes me hopeful. In all of my years attending school board meetings, and there have been a lot, I've rarely seen so many new faces, and it will take our entire community working together to provide the long-term strategic planning and appropriate levels of funding from the state and assembly that we need. And I invite everyone here to help with that effort. Thank you. Thank you. So next we have Tiffany uh, Pizer on Zoom, followed by Brian uh, Charlton here in person. Hi, I'm Tiffany Pizer, P-I-S-E-R in North Pole. Okay, go um, ahead. I want to defer. Oh, sorry. No, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I wanted to th first thank you all for having this meeting and the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, 
I just wanted to point out, I'm a longtime resident of the borough and a parent of six students um, for the past 16 years, and I have 12 more years to go with the district. So that will be a total of 28 years as an active school district parent. I was dismayed by the statement of Brandy Hardy during um, Tuesday's meeting, um, regardless of stating that the following statement is a rumor before making it. The fact that it was spoken from the position of president is not acceptable. I understand emotions are high and this has been a particularly difficult budget season. However, logic and thoughtfulness should be the prevailing reactions when speaking from the president's seat. I was not impressed with the so-called apology and the excuse offered that she quote unquote misspoke. If Ms. Hardy wanted to make a statement regarding some of our local legislators, a prepared statement would have been a better choice rather than speaking off the cuff. I understand that mistakes are made. I've made plenty myself, but for it to happen from a seat of trust is problematic. I do not support retaining Ms. Hardy as the school board president. And I do wanna clarify, I'm not asking that she step down from the school board itself. I just do not support retaining her as the school board president. Um, thank you all for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you for your testimony. Next we have, uh, Brian, uh, I'm sorry, how do you pronounce your last name? Charlton. Charlton, okay. If you'd go ahead and followed by Ellen Weiser. Uh, Brian Charlton, C-H-A-R-L-T-O-N, Fairbanks. I'm here today to share my support for the hard work that's being done by this board and to acknowledge the difficult and stressful position this board has been placed in due to the actions and inactions of our state and local governments. I would also like to recognize that this board is comprised of regular citizens of this borough who are not necessarily practiced in professional politicians. I understand how immensely difficult it is to sit in your seats and be subjected to the scrutiny and sometimes outright rudeness of some members of this community. Nearly every public meeting I attend and or listen to, and I'd say the number is in the hundreds, the members have difficulty following the proper processes. This board is made up of regular citizens and cannot be expected to be perfect. I stand here or sit here as a product of our local education system. My daughter also graduated from UAF after going through our local school system. I've been involved with coaching skiing in our schools and participating as a parent volunteer for over 25 years. Right now I have a son at Pearl Creek School, so you know I am aware of the stress this budgetary process has placed on our students, parents, families, teachers, and all of our board members. We all want what's best for our community. All of that said, I stand by our school board president and the tough decisions made by this school board. I first met Brandy Hardy when I was her ski coach at West Valley High School, where she pushed herself to do her best and support those around her. Now, many years later, the Brandy I know is a tireless advocate for our students and teachers. Her experience as a special education teacher in our schools, a charter school parent, a product of our school and a product of our school system is difficult to match. She is a listener, a doer, a practical leader, and is willing to do the work necessary to find solutions. I find it extremely disappointing that some of our local elected leaders are trying to unseat her from this important position that this community elected her to do. To me, it is disgraceful that these politicians are coming after our school board members for referencing what one of their own colleagues shared with their constituents. Are the ac accusations of their impropriety, impropriety true? I don't know. I ask that we remember that this board is made up of ordinary people who care for our students, but they are not perfect and should not be expected to be. I dare say that no one can say that they have never said anything that they wish they had not. I wanna finish by reminding everyone of the sacrifice that these board members make to serve, to spend all of these hours away from their family, to face constant criticism and undeserved ridicule and derogatory comments, and that they do it not just for their own families, but for all of our families. Please give this board some grace and please do not step down, Ms. Hardy. We need you on this board. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ellen Weiser. And then that'll be followed by David Weisman. Hello, my name is Ellen Weiser, W-E-I-S-E-R, and I live uh, in Fairbanks. I would love to speak about the injustice of Governor Levy's veto 
or the difficulty a school board has to make in making decisions without any funding power whatsoever, or the difficulty of a school board has to get in trying to get our borough to approve more money. But I only have three minutes. So I would like to spend those three minutes in support of Brandy Hardy and in support of school board members in general. First of all, I would like to acknowledge the fact that it is very, very trying to be a school board member and to run for school board, and that there is any need for school board members with integrity, compassion, and fortitude. Let's not scare off future school board members from running for school board with unnecessary public shaming. The purpose of my presence here today is to speak in great support of Brandy Hardy, who I know is a tireless worker for Boreal Sun Charter School, where her children go to school, as a member of the Kids Voting Board, a campaigner for various candidates, and a tireless and well-informed member of this school board. You all have thankless jobs. We need to support you and you need to support Brandy. Ms. Hardy has been willing to put aside all of her time to serve the community as a volunteer. That she made a few of our legislators uncomfortable with an awkward choice of words is unfortunate. That she is passionate about our schools and the choices that all of you have to make is admirable. Don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Please be aware that the message that you are sending to those with passion who have something to say, but who might have misspoken, is dangerous. Please be aware of the message that you're sending to our children. Don't let one or two misspoken words take away from the excellent job that Ms. Hardy is doing and should be allowed to continue doing. Please, go beyond those distractions. You have real work to do. Get back to the real business of educating our children. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Next is David Wiseman, and then followed by Sally Duncan. Uh, David Weissman, um, I live off of uh, China Ridge, and First of all, my first comment is I am full support of Ms. Hardy. She made a mistake. And the last time I looked, we're, everybody in this room, whether I agree with them or not, we're all human. And we all make mistakes. And she apologized. And fine, let's move on. I think the main cause of this, the reason I would speak, is that this is a smokescreen. This is a diversion. I moved. The real reason is the lack of funding for education. I'm not, I was not born in Alaska. I chose to live here, and I choose to live here because I really enjoy this state. The future of the state is with its children, and its children, an educated child, will make will grow up to be an educated adult and a productive adult, hopefully a productive Alaskan. By underfunding the educational system, our governor and our legislature are, in a sense, dooming all of us. Um, if you look at the, throughout the 50 states in this country, the states that support education are the states that sur or thrive. States that underfund education are not sur thriving. We want the state to survive, to thrive, and to grow. We need to have an educated, smart workforce. And that starts with education. The school board, you guys, the local board, are fighting like hell to provide a future for us and for our children and our children's children where the governor and the legislature are failing at that. So don't let this smoke screen. Yes, Brandy ran a mistake. Um, as someone else has said, who among us is not? But the, the real issue is how to fund the future of this state. And if people don't care about it, then don't fund it. But if you care about Alaska, then fund it. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, so next we have Sally Duncan and followed by Libby Dalton.
Good evening, school board. My name is Sally Duncan, last name spelled D-U-N-C-A-N. I live in Pleasant Valley. I thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. I have several points to make, so I'll get right to them. Number one, emotions such as crying, tears, and sobbing do not belong on a professional board. One should recognize their limitations, regardless of passion. Everybody's got passion, and we all deal with it differently. So regardless of passion and serve accordingly. Prior to making a statement in a public arena, researching of the truth of the statement is part of the job of a public servant in order to keep things clean and transparent. There is no excuse for rumor mongering from a board member, none. When news agencies are present, board members are responsible for peaking, speaking the truth, not rumors and certainly not laughing, spouting rumors, and then saying, don't quote me, this is childish behavior. All of the points above were not taken into consideration by board member Hardy, much less President Hardy, who should be held to an even higher standard. Apology? Apology requires humbleness. I didn't get any of that from the apology. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. So next we have Libby Dalton and uh, Ms. Richardson. Could I double check on time? Okay, great, thank you. And Ms. Dalton on Zoom. Hi, my name is Libby Dalton Slane. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. If you'd go ahead and spell your last name and give your area of residence, and you have three minutes. My last name is Slane, S L A N E. My residence is University Hills, Fairbanks. In my opinion, Brandy Hardy should resign as the presiding officer of our school board. If she doesn't, then I hope the board members would have an election immediately to remove her as the presiding officer. Why? Because she's untrustworthy. Ms. Hardy's been involved in egregious threats and violations that took place against board member Melissa Burnett in June of 2023. She's also screamed at interior legislators at town halls here in Fairbanks. And now she's accused several interior legislators of taking bribes to vote not to override the governor's veto of House Bill 140. This hearing is about Brandy Hardy's character and professionalism. She is not here tonight, once again, very unprofessional. There's been a lot of talk this evening about the governor's veto of the education bill. And you should know that legislators are currently working very hard on House Bill 392 on education. Hopefully, they're working together to come to compromises on items known to improve student outcomes, increase teacher compensation through retention incentives, alternate routes to public charter schools authorization and improved routing of funds specific to improve K through three reading proficiency. These are all items the governor wanted addressed in his, in the legislators HB 140 that were left out. Once again, this hearing is about Brandy Hardy and she's not here tonight. She took an oath of office to perform her duties responsibly, 
honestly and impartially. She can't be trusted to do that any longer. She can't be trusted to maintain the degree of professionalism required for her position as presiding officer. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your testimony. So next, and we have two more that we'll be able to fit in tonight is Jacqueline Muehlbauer on Zoom and will be followed by Jim Genoso uh, in person. So not, there she is, okay. We're signing. Change happens in the bottom up. Ms. Muehlbauer. Hi, my name is, yes, Jacqueline Muehlbauer. Uh, my last name is M U E H L B as in boy A U E R. I live on Farmers Loop Road in Fairbanks. Okay. Thank you. You have three minutes. Thank you for taking my testimony. I wasn't sure I would make it, so I appreciate the school board giving me time to speak and on behalf of my support for President Brandy Hardy. I have really appreciated she, her this month. Um, it's been very stressful for all of us, and she has been there by my side at every single thing from day one. I cannot tell you how much strength I have received from her being at every event, every meeting, every march, everything that we have done as a community this week. Her being there has meant to me and listening to her wise comments that are always on point always well researched it's incredible what she's able to keep in her mind and especially as I am someone who is very passionate and I have a hard time keeping myself in check I have a very appreciated her professionalism at every single turn I listened in the March 19th meeting and honestly I don't know when we go from rumor to fact um, journalists have widely said a lot of the same things that she has said, and I don't know when it becomes rumor and when it becomes fact, but I generally do not hold her accountable after six days or three days of sleepless nights in a month where we are all exhausted. I don't have a voice. I've been sick all month because I have been working tirelessly, and this doesn't even compare to what you on the school board and what Brandy has been working on this month. So I just want to thank you all. I am proud of our community. I am proud of our school board. And I fully support Brandy as our school board president and to continue leading us into the future. Thank you for your testimony. Okay. And our last uh, testimony uh, tonight will be Jim Genoso. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. My name is Jim Genoso. I uh, reside in Esther, Alaska. My last name is spelled J-A-N-O-S-O. -O. Um, I won't spend a lot of time here because I think everything's been covered in great detail, but I know Brandy personally, and uh, she has personally helped myself and my wife and my daughter in some uh, things with her schooling, and she has taken her personal time to do that. I know Brandy probably wet better than majority of the people here. I mean, there is obviously some that know her better, but um, I think we all tend to grow from our mistakes. I've made plenty. I go back to my childhood with my father whenever I come up, you know, trying to blame my brother or sister for doing something. He would just say, well, he who is guilty, cast the first, not guilty, cast the first stone. Okay, well, that heard that said here in many ways, shapes, or forms. I operate known in my own business, so I have to sit in your position at times and make that choice of, did what somebody did to a client or to a fellow employee, 
demand a reaction in which I ask them to leave the company or fire them. I look at that, I look at both sides, and I look at what effect that's gonna have on my company, what effect that's gonna have on their personal life, or those they affect, other employees. Then I'll go and I'll try to talk to the other side and see what their perspective was. And if I were to look at this from that perspective, I would say, yeah, you know, Brandy made an error. But I look at the value she brings to the situation where we're at right now. I've testified at other, you know, school board meetings, and as I've, other people have said here, I have a very positive outlook with the board that's here now, and Brandy is a key portion of that. So given that, and my own personal experience of learning from the most painful situations in my life, I grow from that. I am still currently in charge of, you know, my position at my company. I've had people that have forgiven me, clients that have forgiven me for making terrible mistakes. And I think we should all look at that and uh, take into account what Brandy offers and what she has done as a heavier weight on the scale in which to make the decision. So I support Brandy as a friend. I support her in all she's done for our school system so far and for me personally. And I hope you guys make the proper choice and uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Okay, that includes our hour of testimony. Uh, I wanna thank everyone for uh, coming and also thank those who have emailed over the last uh, period of time. Uh, and with that, we will close uh, public testimony and uh, move on to our board discussion. So our board discussion will be focused on board member relations and conduct. And do we have a motion from the? Move to go into executive session to discuss matters that might impact the reputation or character of an individual related to board member comments and conduct. And further note for the record that the individual does not object to the executive session. Legal counsel may be included. Second. Is there any objection? Seeing none, we are going to move into executive session. I also want to note that legal counsel will be joining us for a portion of our executive session. So as we go into executive session, uh, we'll be clearing the room uh, and we'll have a little transition um, for that. So again, thank you for coming. And
Recording in progress. Move to come out of executive session. Second. Second. Seeing no objection, we're out of executive session. Um, I want to say that, uh, yes, we have had a productive discussion. We've heard the concerns of the community. We share a lot of those concerns, and we are going to continue to address them directly. Um, and with that in mind, um, we are going to be recessing this meeting and reconvening on Tuesday at 6 o'clock. And uh, so could I have a motion to uh, recess and reconvene on Tuesday, April 2nd at 6 o'clock. Move to recess and reconvene Tuesday, April 2nd at 6 p.m. Second. Is there any objection? Seeing none, then we are recessed until Tuesday, April 2nd at 6 o'clock. And, and so we are done tonight. Thank you.